In the game in total, there is six bosses overall that you have to take out, the sixth one being the final, like, core of the spaceship. And you fight five other aliens in order to receive the pieces of the map or whatever, the UFO picture. And most of them are pretty easy to take out with a simple pattern. There's only one boss throughout the entire game that's actually difficult. And it's not even the final boss. It's actually the, you know, the third, the fourth boss of the game, the third from the end. Um, the fourth boss of the game is really annoying and my least favorite boss uh, in this game. The final boss of the game is actually not that difficult. Now we just took a ladder in order to get out of the sewer. We're going to head over in this direction first and maneuver our way down to this house. Taking out frogs, any frogs that seemingly get in my way. This house, I use the key and thing gives us potions which are of course very useful because of course they refill our health. And there's going to be um, certain boss battles where I'm going to need the potions in order to be able to survive it because there's just some times where you're going to get hit. The final boss of the game though I must give credit is actually pretty difficult if there wasn't a trick that you can use against him that just allows him to, for you to sit back and relax and take him out with doing, him, doing no damage pretty much to you except for the beginning part which is up to you pretty much in order to deal with it. Now we're going to go in this house, follow, if you can follow this, you know, good luck. When you get to this dead end, you move forward into it, and you see how my life just upgraded. I now have three bars of health, which is all I'm going to grab throughout the game. I, I don't need any more health in the, than what I have in order to complete it. Uh, none of the enemies, other than, the, other than that one boss, which I mentioned, the fourth boss, which is really annoying. And the final boss, I, you know, I, the few, the potions I'll have will be able to help me get through, uh, the first part. The second part, though, he won't hit me at all because I'll be able to use a trick against him. Now we're gonna head to the sewer. As you've seen, like, it's been a while, I haven't gotten to a boss yet. What's interesting about the game is it takes a long time, it seems like, to get to the first boss. But once you get to that first boss, all the other bosses are relatively... Uh, right after each other. There's not too many sewers in between them. There's usually only one or two between the rest of the bosses while there's like a large huge area between the other ones. Uh, between this one. Working our way, the you know, worthless rats aren't going to be bothering us at all. And you can just see, it's a giant maze where it's just looping back and forth, up and down, over and over and over again. Not very exciting to be looking at, I know. Trust me, I know. But, there's not many enemies to deal with either, which of course is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending upon how you, how you feel about it. We're almost at the end of this part of the sewer, so we actually are close to their first boss of, of the game. Which is a very, actually very, very easy boss to defeat. Once you uh, start doing a, a certain pattern against him. Back and forth, more up and down, left and right, so all through the sewers. It's like the most complex sewer system in the history of mankind, apparently, in this city. Okay, here we go. This house. This is the house we need to go into. We're going to do another one of these first-person perspective things. Okay, head all the way down. Left. Left of this hallway. Take a right. Another right. And enter this door. Here we go. First boss of the game. And he's very, very simple because he follows, he does the same pattern of attack every time. Watch what I'm going to be able to do. I'm able to get around him pretty easily and able to get hits. He does left arm, you know, he does the one arm, the other arm, then the right arm again, and then both. Or officially his left, you know, his right, left, right, and then, you know, right, left, right whatever you know what I'm saying I think I'm getting confused it's his right or left or left and right and maybe is up I'm not sure either 
Anyway, he's done. He's done for. He's easy enough to deal with. Once you defeat every boss, pretty much you end up outside of the building you were just in, and then there's always like a staircase right next to you in order to take you right back in the sewer to continue on your journey. Grab some money there. Which you can use in order to buy different things. You can uh, buy hot dog uh, at the hot dog stand in order to completely refill your health. But if, for the most part, if you take your time um, and you upgrade your gun right off the bat, like I suggested, you shouldn't have too much trouble in terms of the regular enemies. If you don't upgrade your gun or somehow it downgrades throughout it, um, there is an area late in the game that can be used to just gain all your potions, missiles, health, t you know, everything back real easily. But that's pretty late in the game. There may be some other areas like that. Um, when we get to that part late in the game, I'll show you where it is in case um, if playing through it, you needed, you know, po you know, you needed health or money or whatever you may need at the end of the game. You're seeing these great hopping grasshopper type enemies now, or of course, flying about, jumping over my almost all my shots. In other games I played, I'm able to jump in order to avoid the attacks. In this game, the enemies are the ones who can jump and avoid my attacks. So. Turnabout is fair play, right? Enter another staircase, go back into the sewer. Walk around here, use a light bulb. There we go. So I can see the great path in front of me. Like I said, though, you as you can see, though, in the dark, you actually can maneuver quite well. And if you know the path well enough, you obviously don't need the light bulbs. So, you know, they're not, you don't need them all the time, at least. You can, I stupid like spinning things. There's a there's a snail that it takes a bunch of hits to kill, and then turns into slime. I'm just gonna sit here and wait a second for this gun downgrade to disappear. Like I said before, if there's one in your path, just wait the time that it takes for it to disappear. There's no reason to go through it, take the downgrade. There's just absolutely no need to. Okay, gonna enter this house over here. And Mortissa gives us the whip. We actually finally have the whip that I mentioned earlier in the video. So, we now have the whip. Which, I, like I said, I, I really don't need to use. I'm not going to really mess with it. I'll grab some upgrades for it just for the hell of it as you know, as I'm going through. But, if it can be useful. Um, there may be some boss strategies to use it with. Um, overall, through playing it, the strategies I've been able to use against the bosses... Um, has worked well enough that I haven't really needed to try using the whip to do anything. The whip, though, is more powerful. That if you do have a, a downgraded gun or a lower, you know, a lower gun, um, the whip can actually be quite helpful. But if you have the full giant gun, like I have the eight-level gun, you really sh uh, don't need um, the whip at all, or really be able to, you know, really use the whip at all. Just pretty much seeing the same things over and over again. It seems like in this in this whole giant maze of sewers. Stupid like face blob thing disappeared in the ground and then reappeared, trying to be all tricky and sneak up on Fester. But this is his quest, damn it! And nothing's gonna be able to stop Fester on his amazing quest to rid the world of aliens. And hey, it's time for the second boss. Here we go. This boss is really easy as well. He goes right, left, right, left. And you can just walk around him. You see how I'm doing this? Pretty easy, right? Wait, and wait, shoot, and move, shoot, and move. That's all you need to do in order to take him out. And of course, having the best, you know, this upgraded gun, of course, helps. I mean, it takes a good amount of shots, but turbo really helps speed up the, proce uh, the process. I'm sure mashing, you know, mashing the button a lot would just make your finger ridiculously tired in the amount of shots it would take to finally take out this guy. That's why I highly recommend using your turbo controller or your NES Advantage if you have one of those hanging around. And once again, I'm outside of a building and there's a staircase right next to the building. How convenient. 
use the light bulb in the sewer so we can continue on here. Now we're on our way to 